Okay, we're going to do a, a video tutorial on similarity with polygons and specifically triangles eventually. So just a couple of things uh, just to make sure you know right away. The symbol for similarity is this tilde or squiggle here. So it's like the top of a congruence symbol, but it's just that. Similarity statement is the two things that are similar. Uh, so, for instance, if I'm talking about two triangles and I just made these up, this is what a similarity statement would look like. Triangle ABC is similar to triangle EFG, EFGH, that's some sort of um, quadrilateral, is similar to LMNO, another quadrilateral. All right, so let's talk about what it means to be similar. So, in real world context, um, similar means alike but not the same. So the way that I want you to kind of take that and, and add it to your geometry definition would be that same size is not really what similar is. Same size, same shape, that's what congruent is. So we're thinking same shape, but maybe different sizes. So for similar in general, uh, two polygons of the same shape but different sizes another way of kind of verifying this would be matching angles are congruent but matching sides are, here's a new word for you, proportional. Proportional. Okay, so what I mean when I say proportional, I mean when you compare them, their ratio or the fraction of the two comparison reduces to the same fraction. So for instance, if I'm looking at these two shapes, I can see that these two quadrilaterals are the same shape but different sizes. And this 6 would go with this 15. So when I'm talking about a ratio, I'm making a fraction. This 8 goes with this 20. And what proportional would mean is that these two fractions would reduce to the same fraction. So 6 over 15 reduces to 2 over 5. And 8 over 20, if you divide both of these by a common factor of 4, you would also get 2 over 5. So when we say they reduce to the same thing, that's what proportional means. So in this case, what we just found, that fraction that they both reduce to, that common fraction, that's the scale factor. That's called the scale factor. And you've heard scale factor before when we were doing dilations. Notice that the pre-image and the image, they were similar figures, but they were not the same size. They were the same shape, not the same size, and it was a scale factor that told you what the difference was. So if we move to like number two here, where we've got two similar figures, which means their matching angles are the same, and their matching sides are proportional, what that means is I should be able to find this value of x here using a proportion. So let me show you what that might look like. x matches up with three. So I made a ratio out of those two corresponding sides. But then this 18 matches up with that 4. Notice I went left to right both times. The X was with the big shape. The 18 is with the big shape. So both of them are on top. 3 is with the smaller one. 4 is with the smaller one. Both of them are on the bottom. You've got to be consistent. So now that I've got this equation, I can solve for X. Cross multiply and I get 4 times X is equal to 3 times 18. 3 times 18 is 54, so 4x is equal to 54. Divide both sides by 4, and x goes into 54. I'm sorry, 4 goes into 54 with my calculator. It goes in 13.5 uh, times. So that's what my value of x is. Now, I still need to find the value of y, so we're going to do that real quick, but the same idea, y plus 2 matches up with this 5 and we're going to use the same scale factor 18 over 4 because we know it works so cross multiply 
and I get 4 times y plus 2 is equal to 5 times 18. Now 4y plus 8 is equal to 5 times 18, which is 90. Subtract 8, subtract 8. 4y is equal to 82. Divide everything by 4, and y is equal to 20.5. Okay, so that's how we can set up a proportion and solve. Matching sides and similar figures are proportional. If I'm checking to see if figures are similar, I want to check to make sure that their matching angles are congruent. So I'm checking to see that all these angles are the same. And they look the same. So now the next test would be if their matching sides are proportional. So 7 goes with 9. 7 goes with 9, and 3 goes with 6. So I want to see if those two ratios are equal. That's what I'm checking. Well, 7 over 9 doesn't reduce. It's, um, that's, that's what its fraction is. It's uh, bigger than 1 half. But 3 over 6 does redu reduce to 1 half. These two things are not equal. So these two triangles are not similar. Sometimes you'll see kind of a slash through the similar symbol. That's another way of saying um, not similar. Okay, let's do a word problem. All right, Megan was curious about the height of a building in her hometown. She used a 2.5 model of the building and measured its shadow at 1 p.m. The length of the shadow was 0.8 meters. Then she measured the building shadow, the real building shadow, and it was 168 meters. What is the height of the building? Okay, so if we do like a model of this, so if that would be our real building, we don't know how tall it is, but its shadow on the ground was 168 meters. And then I've got her model, which is this sm small one model, and then its shadow, which was 0.08 meters. So what's matching up, That again, this model was 2.5 meters tall. X is going to go with the 2.5, and 168 is going to go with 0 0.08. So there, that's what my proportion is. That's what I'm going to solve. That's what I'm going to cross multiply to get what X is. So cross multiply, get 0 0.08 times X is equal to 2.5 times 168. 0 0.08X is equal to 2.5 times 168 in the calculator gives me 420. Now to get x by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by 0 0.08 meters, and x will be equal to 420 divided by 0 0.08 is 5,250 meters. It's a really tall building. All right. Now we're going to talk about a couple patterns that you're going to see. Um, so in this first example, it talks about parallel lines. What parallel lines, if they intersect the sides, then it's going to separate the triangle proportionally. So what that's going to do is the parts that it separates one of the sides into, the entire triangle's parts get separated into the same ratio. So for instance, x to 6 is going to be the same ratio as 10 to 12. And you can use that to solve. That also can be interpreted as x to 10 equals 6 to 12, where you're going left to right as opposed to top to bottom or something like that. So this is going to end up being the same exact ratio because when I cross multiply, I end up with the same numbers, x times 12, x times 12, 6 times 10, 10 times 6, that's all the same thing. So 12x equals 60, divide both sides by 12, x is equal to 5. That's how I would solve for x there. Another pattern that we can notice is if a line divides two sides of a triangle proportionally, then it is parallel to the third side. So this is the converse of what we just did. So if 5 over 6 is indeed equal to 10 over 12, or if 5 over 10 is equal to 6 over 12, which they are, then what we can be sure of is that these two sides have to be parallel. All right, last thing I want to point out, if you have a, 
a ray that bisects an angle, so a ray that cuts that angle into two equal parts, it separates the triangle proportionally, meaning um, this side and this piece should be equal to this side and this piece. So the side of the triangle that didn't get intersected by the ray and the piece that's on its same side. So 50 to X should be the same as 120 to 10. That ratio should be the same. And that's what I can use to solve. So 120 times X is equal to 500. Divide both sides by 120. And my calculator tells me that 500 divided by 120 is 4.17. And that would be what X is in this case. Now I want to go through proven similarity with you. Uh, the first way of proving similarity, this is kind of like the what, what we did when we were proving triangles congruent. We would love not to have to go through and show that all three pairs of matching sides are proportional and all three pairs of matching angles are congruent and have to go through all six of those pairs of items that have to be true if uh, figures, specifically triangles, are similar. So we have some shortcuts, and the first of those shortcuts is angle-angle. And what that means is if two matching angles of two triangles are congruent, then the two triangles are similar. All right, so what we've got here is angle A and angle D are congruent. That's one pair of angles that's congruent. And angle B and angle E are congruent. So that's the second pair of angles that's congruent. So that's what angle-angle similarity looks like. All right, our next shortcut is side-side-side similarity. And what that is is if three pair of matching sides are congruent in two triangles, then the two triangles triangles are similar now I misspoke here and let's see if anybody noticed it and kind of lost their breath for a second I said are congruent because I'm thinking congruent triangles so let me backtrack here and say are instead of congruent are and the new word is proportional really want to emphasize that um, not congruent but proportional they reduce to the same scale factor they reduce to the same ratio. So we've got to check that here, that all three sides reduce to the same ratio. All right, so we're matching up all the parts. So the smallest one here is 4, so it's got to go with the smallest one here, 2, 4 over 2. The medium one here is 6, so the medium one here is 3. And the largest is 8, the largest is 4. So that's my four ratio, sorry, my three ratios, and those all have to reduce to the same number in order for this to be proportional. Four over two reduces to two over one, six over three reduces to two over one, and eight over four reduces to two over one. We have the same similarity ratio, we have the same scale factor for all three of these, so they are what we call proportional, and that would be side, side, side similarity. All right, our last shortcut for proving triangle similar would be side angle side and side angle side similarity is a pair of matching sides are proportional and one pair of included angles are congruent in two triangles then the triangles are similar okay so this is like side angle side congruence where you have that wraparound pattern side side and the angle in between side side and the angle in between that's what we mean by included angle so we've got to check and make sure that the sides are proportional five goes with 20 seven goes with 28 those need to reduce to the same thing that's what we're checking on five over 20 reduces to one fourth seven over 28 reduces to one fourth so we've just showed that they are proportional 115 is the same as 115 so that's what side angle side similarity looks like so proven triangles Similar, you have three shortcuts, angle-angle similarity, side-side-side similarity, side-angle-side similarity. One example with you right here on number six, you can see that 120 and 120 are the same. 40 and 20 are not the same, so they would not be 
similar by angle angle so these are not similar 